So both crews lined up on the start. How are you seeing things, guys? It's looking very, uh, looking a bit bouncy and a bit wavy, but doing a little bit of turning there. So I think they'll just be trying to settle, settle the nerves and settle this. It's only a one piece, so it's a lot of pressure to start well on this one. They don't seem to be moving a lot, do they? No, it almost looks like the tide's a bit slack. Um, in, in that, you know, it, uh, tide's not going one way or the other. Um, so actually, it's, it, could, it could be uh, quite nice um, conditions later on. So, it seems like a clean start. How would you rate that start from both crews? I think it looked pretty punchy from both, and both looked like they got away cleanly and not, not a lot of danger there. Um, I think it looks like it's a pretty even across the start. Maybe Cambridge jumped out initially, but I think it looks like Thames really is getting into their rhythm here. What's the coach, um, Paddy Ryan, going to be saying to the Cambridge women in terms of, you know, you've not done as well as you might like to have done in the last two fixtures, you know, how much pressure is on them for this race? I think he'll be telling them that they actually really need to go out and really attack it from the start. If, if you haven't done so well in the last fixtures, you really need to, I don't know, em embrace the challenge and get off well because then you can get your confidence, you can get into it and then you can settle and drive a rhythm, whereas if they get off on the back foot, it's going to be hard to come back after that. So we're coming down after a very even start, very slack water. There's so much land water coming down because of all the rain we've had in the UK that uh, really the incoming tide isn't really able to dominate. So these crews are going to take longer to row this course, which is going to be, I guess, about two thirds of the way on the boat race course. You can see Cambridge as they come past us just looking out the window with a very slight lead, but it's really even, and uh, both coxes behaving themselves, no clashes yet? No, not just yet. Um, you can actually see, see, it looks quite windy out there. You can uh, you get all this bounce coming off the walls um, during this uh, this part. Now, after you get past the Craven Cottage, the Fulham football ground, you can see on your right, um, you, uh, hopefully it should start to, uh, to flatten out a bit. And um, as, as the rate comes down now, uh, it looks like Cambridge is just moving out slightly. Yeah, Cambridge is really going off on, onto their side of the river, so it'll be interesting to see if the Thames crew follows. But I think both crews look like they've gone to a good start. It looks like they've both got quite different rowing techniques. Like, to me, Cambridge look a little bit more upright, whereas the Thames crew really looks to like be swinging on it. So it'll be interesting to see how the different tactics play out as they go on. Yeah, they've got a nice swing off the back end, uh, Thames. I like, I like what they're doing there, um, you know, through with their coach, uh, Tom Mapp, who works with this fantastic women's programme at Thames Rowing Club. Stroke, I'm not sure if we gave her a check. Doria Matthews, the 22-year-old. Uh, well, we're just looking at the middle of the Thames boat there. That's the um, sixth woman, I think, Katie Metalli. Uh, that we can see on the left of the picture and uh, at the moment Thames Rowing Club just being bettered by the light blues as we pass the first minute of the race how hard are these guys going at this point in the race where we come to Fulham Football Ground and they're very close to Fulham Football Ground aren't they? Yeah almost unusually so uh, traditionally the, the stream would probably be a bit further towards the left of your picture right now um, but you're saying about um, the physical challenge and this is really where it starts to sting. Um, I often describe to people the, uh, the feeling of the boat race is like going off for a 2k and you just don't settle um, and you just keep going for another 17 minutes so I think this, this, is, this is the part that's really going to be hurting them and they've got to sit, sit in this for the next couple of minutes. Yeah, it takes a lot of confidence in this, but I think especially in the boat race where you really need to get off a good to a good start, you're often going out harder than you would in, in a 2K race, and then it's just like, okay, how can I grin and bear this lactic acid and know that it will start to feel better when, when you drive onto your rhythm? And it looks like Cambridge has really attacked it, but it looks like Thames is really holding on, and they've not given Cambridge as much advantage as they probably would have wanted on that inside corner. I'd say Cambridge would have wanted more. I think you're absolutely right, Grace. I think Thames have done really well to stick in there. I reckon that both Coxes, they've got to stay in the centre of the river and shoot the centre of Hammersmith Bridge. But I guess round the Surrey bend, the crew on the left, Thames Rowing Club, will cut in as the river moves round towards our left as we're looking at the screen. And uh, Cambridge, I think, will have a lot of work to do in the latter part of this race. 
Exactly. It, it looks like Thames are actually making a bit of a move now. They've, they've uh, gained some distance back on Cambridge. Uh, so it'll be quite interesting in the next couple of, couple of minutes see how Cambridge respond because they're going to have to if they want to win this race. It's quite striking, as you, you mentioned the technique race, that nice sort of swing back and move off the back with the Thames, they put some momentum into that shell as they move away. And I, I know we're not getting quite the same view of Cambridge on the right of the picture, but it doesn't look like they've got quite so much swing off the back. Yeah, I don't. I, it doesn't look like that. I actually went for a row with a Cambridge woman a few weeks ago, and it was something that with, I know they were working on. So maybe that's a, a still a work in progress because they definitely look a little bit more upright in, in the other crew. But it takes a lot of confidence to learn how to swing back, sit back, have that patience. It also looks like um, Thames Rowing Club. They uh, they having they look a lot more relaxed on the recovery. They're getting a lot more out of each stroke than the Cambridge women at the minute. Although Cambridge are really sticky in there, it looks like they've just checked that um, that move by Thames. Yeah, I would say Thames. Just looking at this, and you can make your own guesses, can't you? Might have a slight, a very slight advantage, maybe 50 centimeters or so. It is a fantastic race. I think you can agree to that but the bend will swing round in favour of Thames and, and their Cox uh, Antonia inverted commas Tintin Stutter who's Cox with Tyway Scullers uh, club down at the finish of the boat race of course for many years um, I guess she's going to be really enjoying this feeling you know it's our bend to come and um, that, that must feel good for her Oh, there's nothing better than knowing you're just slowly creeping through a crew and I think this will be a really, really important phase for Cambridge to not get down, not lose your confidence. But being the crew that's behind at the start and then you slowly edge away, I think it, it gives you a lot of free energy and, and I think teams have done that really well. But this will be a good test for Cambridge and not to panic and it kind of looks like they're getting a little bit rushier so it's it's having that confidence to actually stay strong in the water and still have time and not feel like you're just going to chase it and this is the this this highlights the importance of the cox like this is a crucial part of the race and it's really the cox's job just to let uh, give give a sense of calm to their their crew and give them confidence that you know guys we've done this in training and we can we can get this out, out now I guess if this was going to be a full boat race course, and it's not, it's two-thirds of the way down, so we've probably got another five minutes to row, to Chiswick steps. but Cambridge's job will be to hang on to Thames and then take the advantage as the race moves round to a right-hand bend, which is going towards the finish, Barnes Bridge, but they haven't got that to look forward to, so I guess they've got to try and hang on anyway, so this is a crucial part of the race for the Light Blues. Yeah, and I guess when you put this race in perspective of the whole season... This is a good test. It's a good, it's a good thing for them to practice being under this much pressure, and also know that they actually don't have the advantage later on. They've got to respond now, and I think that was a lot for me to get my head around in the boat race. Sometimes you need to do a move that's above and beyond what you can hold, um, and it takes a lot of confidence to do that, and then be able to come back onto your rhythm. But hopefully, this is a time that Cambridge can practice doing something like that in case it happens in a couple of weeks' time. I don't know. Looking at Cambridge, it, it seems they're they're rowing well and nicely, but it doesn't see. It seems like they could do just the finesse at the the front end, maybe just the way the blades are locking, a little bit of inconsistency there. Uh, I don't know if I'm seeing something different to you guys on that. I don't know. I think I think Cambridge looked quite good at the front end. Um, to me, I think it's it's probably more in the recovery that they're they're losing um, they're losing it. And I think uh, um, Thames are, are really making the most out of that. So I think Cambridge just needs to calm down um, and uh, and perhaps just drop their straight rate. We just saw the straight rates pop up on the screen there. Um, Cambridge are overrating Thames by four beats per minute, which is a lot. Um, so you know, if they can get a bit more out of each stroke, then I think they can actually make a move here. Yeah, it's a really interesting philosophy. I think sometimes as a rower you want to feel like you're doing absolutely everything to go as fast as you can, and that can sometimes translate to rating high. But having the confidence to be like, actually, can we drop at two points and go just as fast because the boat's doing more work for us is, is a really important thing to be able to get your head around, and maybe that's the situation. But Cambridge is not letting teams just walk away and often when a crew can inch, inch, inch you can lose your confidence and let them break free but it looks like here they're holding on well and maybe they know it's starting to straighten out soon and they're about to push but this looks like a good move from Cambridge. 
Cambridge might be pushing back there and at the top of your picture, well on the left of your picture now, the women from Thames Rowing Club just next to us on the embankment down here at Putney, fantastic club, Cambridge University Boat Club on the right of the picture, you're with me Martin Cross, Grace Prendergrast and Angus Groom taking you through the closing stages of this first fixture that we've got to show you today of the boat race warm-up series and uh, well Cambridge are really battling and they've got to at the high rate they've got to get back on Thames Rowing Club it's going to make such a difference if they can finish level with Thames Rowing Club that, that that's going to be you've got a lot out of this and that's a big ask isn't it at the moment yeah definitely I think um, Cambridge have actually done pretty well to check the, uh, the, the, the inside of the bend so far that Thames have got um, I think the, this Surrey bend it kind of goes in sections and we're just coming into um, a section now which uh, is going to favour Thames a little bit more so I think if Cambridge can survive perhaps the next minute and then have a, a sprint for home then perhaps they can get on on, te uh, on on terms where it's a bit more straighter yeah maybe Thames pushing a bit out um, how come we haven't had any clashing guys normally you know the, the coxes tend to steer towards each other and it's a bit exciting for us commentators if not for Richard Phelps, the umpire. Why hasn't that happened, this race? Yeah, they look like they're getting close, but not, yeah. I, I guess the coxswains are probably like, we want to give our chart crews the best chance of having a clean row where they're not having to be put under added pressure and they can focus on what they're doing in their rowing. Yeah, just look at that graphic on the bottom right of the screen. That tells you where they are on the boat race course. Cambridge up at 36, Thames still down at 32. Cambridge, of course, more prepared for the actual boat race, and the finish will come, I guess, in the next minute, minute and a half, and Cambridge will be winding for the finish. Thames, maybe they might rise to 33 if they can hit 34. Are Cambridge moving? I think they are, you know. Um, I, just going back to your previous point about, uh, about not clashing, actually. So, um, so often it's, it's a tactic uh, of, of Coxes to, to clash to get, get a bit, bit of an advantage but I think like Grace said like uh, they want to make the most out of, uh, out of the pieces so I think they're going to um, uh, it's been the right call today not to go for each other so we're, we're, we're coming round to Chiswick Steps which I think is the finish of this piece it's a long piece that they're doing sort of two thirds of the boat race course Thames the crew on the far side in the dark colours leading the Cambridge light blue boat as we come up to the last few strokes of this race. Cambridge desperately trying to get back, aren't they? They really are and you can see the rate going up and up and up and, and it looks like the, the two different rhythms are getting further apart from each other in the Cambridge and the Thames crew. But also when you're on that lower base rhythm, Sometimes you can't transfer up as easy, so it'll be interesting to see what teams can do here if Cambridge starts pushing back, if they can actually start going up and right and respond. Cambridge are really putting pressure on Thames now. This is a really good sprint for them. Yeah, so we're coming up towards the finish. Chiswick Steps is very close. It's a bit difficult to spot on the bank, is it, Chiswick Steps? I'm not sure I've ever known when I'm going past it. There you but go. There you we go. The yeah, there. okay, in the background. Um, well, what's that going to have been like? A canvas? A quarter of a length to uh, Thames Rowing Club. Yeah, it was a, it was a very spirited finish from Cambridge and they, and they managed to pull it back well. So, I don't know, the angles are sometimes a little bit hard to tell, but it looked like it was all, yeah, down to about a canvas at, at, at a guess. Um, you know, we can get a look at that race and, and, and look at the key moments of it shortly. Um, just off the top of your head, Grace, uh, what is that going to do for Cambridge's confidence uh, going forward for the boat race on the 30th of March? I think it'll be a mixture. I think there's some really positive things to, for Cambridge to take out of that. They they managed to respond to a crew that was inching and inching and, and could have broken free. So I think that's a real positive. And to be able to have a really strong start is another thing I know that they've been trying to work on. So they're two things I think they can gain confidence in. I think the tough thing will be that it's a shorter course and they were rating higher. They did wind at the end and then understanding how you're going to translate that when you've got to add another six seven minutes to the race so let's have a look at the highlights we kind of spoke about the start in commentary um clean from both crews uh 
I guess looking at, I, I still wonder about the Cambridge front end actually, just a little bit disjointed. I, I don't know whether that's um, how I'm seeing it or if that's the case. Uh, and then we had this beautiful uh, patch coming th past the boat houses on the embankment. Great place to watch the boat race. Of course, you know, there's going to be a fan zone over there in Bishop's Park as well um, to catch the boat race on March the 30th. Nice smooth from Megan Lee in the uh, stroke seat of Cambridge, around the back end. Yeah, she looks like she's setting up her crew really well and she's sort of holding through, sitting back. So I think if you can start passing that down and down, then they'll be able to really cement that base rhythm. And this is where Cambridge had to hang on against Thames, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think actually um, Cambridge will have gotten a lot of confidence about uh, out of that section in particular because you know if you're if you're the Middlesex crew and you're checking the moves of uh, the Surrey crew going around that bend like it's all to play for come uh, past the point where the piece finished um, and you know that's that could be a massive mental blow to the the crew on Surrey I also think Cambridge having the practice of sitting next to a crew for so long will be so valuable for them. Like they were within contact the whole time, so you're practicing that side-by-side -side race, and they would have got a lot of confidence that they can cope with that pressure and 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 embrace that rather than shy away from it. So as we're looking at this coming up towards the finish, um, Ian Weir, who's who's uh, our technical wizard, has just handed me uh, the verdict. I feel I feel like. As your Cambridge, but you should read it out, Grace. Yeah, I'll take the honours on this one. Ta Thames v Cambridge woman verdict was one foot. So, as we're saying, great practice for Cambridge to be in a race like that. Strong performance from Thames, and they looked like they had a good rhythm. I was super impressed with how the Thames woman transferred onto their base pace rhythm, and it looked really strong. So, I think actually a real positive for both crews. But yeah, one foot. Not not in Cambridge's favour. So um